Hello, this is Arne Koets from the Kemenate in Laugeroten and today I wanted to talk to you about groin armor. So you see that most um, 15th century armors that we think of tend to have mail as armor for the groin. So if there's going to be any armor for the groin at all, rather than the legs, eh, the cuisses and the fold, for the hips, if you will, and the tacits, then the actual groin would be, if anything, protected by mail. That's what we usually think about. And there's several different options for this. So there's either a skirt, which is famously worn under armor, or a shirt that can extend and cover the groin. Or you could have brayettes, which are underpants made out of mail, that actually are well, basically a skirt that has a flap coming underneath it. However, you could also have a strip of mail attached to the actual bottom of the cuirass. And this means that you still have mail in front of your groin. And then you can have several combinations thereof. Now, the usual reason is given why you would have mail there instead of plate. It being such an important target in armored combat, because it's well, one of the few things that are left over covered purely in mail is that you need to ride. So it seems really obvious that you couldn't ride if you put a plate there. Well, there's a few solutions that do crop up when you start looking for it historically. So for instance, longer folds that go all the way down to the saddle and then just telescope up to allow the saddle to fall into it. For instance, English folds, sometimes have the tacit sitting on top of the fold and the fold just telescopes in, leaving the tacit in their usual position. This works quite well to protect the groin in combination with the leg armor. However, there is such a thing as a plate codpiece. They are few and far between, but there are some effigies and various other depictions that we have showing plate codpieces. Some ambiguous ones where it might be just a male codpiece of a briette, but a lot of them we can actually tell that they are plate codpieces. Now, of course, we wanted to try to see if we could make one in order to try out if we could ride in it. So how is it going to interact with a medieval saddle, with the Arson plate and so forth? So the Arson plate is the front head, the pommel of the medieval saddle. And it is known as the Arson plate because it is, well, covered in steel uh, normally. And these uh, Arson plates, they cover your groin. So this allows you to have less armor on your groin because the saddle might be in the way. However, not all medieval saddles used for war actually had such plates. Secondly, even if you have such a plate, the coverage might not be as good as you might imagine. And various weapons can be channeled down there. So like I said, because it's such an important target in martial arts, as we know from the sources, it was probably interesting to uh, or armor this a little bit more. And this is why we made an attempt today. So. Brayettes under armor with a plate codpiece. So what we see here, as we've just seen in the saddle, I just decided to put the rest of the cuirass on to, to show you how this would interact with the leg armor. How it would interact with the leg armor when I'm wearing the tassets. As you can see, it kind of covers the, the hole relatively reasonably. And this is the kind of thing we also see in the actual uh, imagery. So in the sculpture, we see it in the de depictions, in the effigies, and so forth. This is the kind of thing we're talking about. Now, these things are usually articulated. The articulation makes a difference, but not a great deal. What makes it a little bit easier is to find your points to, to work out for you, so that they, they don't just try to shear the point so much. Because if you have one continuous piece of metal, then of course it will be pushed up by the saddle much more, and pushed to the side much more. Though it doesn't articulate a great deal. It also might mean that it's a little bit easier to get it shaped to the wearer. Perhaps, I don't know. So what is kind of interesting is that it's something that we've been toying with for some time. They are kind of a real oddity. They are relatively rare, less rare than I thought they were, but they're relatively rare. And uh, just I just wanted to give a, a little shout out to Robert McPherson, of course, the legend that he is. And of course, Augusto Bourbon, who actually made this thing 
on a uh, on a whim in the last moment to actually try out. So what we noticed is that it's actually a lot easier to ride in it than I had initially thought already. Um, it is basically remarkably comfortable, especially in conjunction with the male briette underneath it. Um, this uh, the male underneath the seat, you don't really notice it at all and um, there might be some opportunity for it to rub the surface of the saddle so this is why male briettes might be always a little bit of a thing oh do i want to damage my saddle however even if you wear a skirt on your armor a male skirt or the end of a shirt that forms a, a skirt in a sense you quite often accidentally sit on it for a little bit or it might slip between your legs for instance especially if you ride for longer so it's very possible that you'll sit on the mail anyway, and thereby it kind of needs to be arranged that you could sit on the mail without problems. Now, if you then have a flap that goes underneath your perineum all the way to the front, then we call that a cod piece. This can be attached to either eh, a briette, like these shorts that I'm wearing now, which is nothing more than a skirt with such a flap. And then we can have it that flap attached to a shirt. So I could wear my full shirt and attach a flap to the bottom of that, that is a possibility. That is something we see on originals. And then uh, thirdly, um, you could uh, have this plate attached as well, this plate a cord piece. Now they kind of all kind of just overlap to each other. Now also because this rayette is made like an original with two flaps of mail overlapping and then the mail cord piece. If I now would have a shirt coming down over here, that would also overlap with that. And you would have up to four layers of mail, theoretically, that a thrust would need to penetrate. The plate, of course, does a great deal more. Now, this might just be simply the feeling of why is there such a gap here? I would rather have it plugged by my armor. This might just be a bigger deal than the actual protection needed or the actual protection afforded. If you think about what happens here is that you could still end up in this gap. In fact, if you would hit it, you would probably slip and hit this point here, uh, at which point you're entirely dependent on the male to actually protect you. However, it does feel a little bit more protected. Um, so especially if you have a polex thrust or something like that, um, it is just a little bit easier to just walk into it. Now note that there's also the actual plate itself here and the actual femoral artery is actually covered by this plate and this plate. The artery is quite high up over here. It's quite deep in your leg, hence femoral artery. This is just one of the, the ones that is often mentioned when we're talking about a groin shot that people think of as the damage that are likely to do. But you do need to hit a very specific spot, which is rather deep into the groin. So a lot of the fold already does cover a lot of inroads to that type of anatomy. The groin itself, however, can actually bleed a great deal and thereby um, the, the cod piece would actually help uh, perhaps more than it seems. So um, yeah, it's uh, remarkably easy to make one of these, remarkably easy to make it work. It is not particularly common to see it in artwork. So this is not a common thing. However, it is a thing that it has historic precedent. So just a little side note, a little experiment. Can we physically ride with one of these? Well, the answer is clearly yes. Did they ride with this is another question. That's when we look back at the actual sources, um, like for instance, the, the drawing of Maximilian, uh, where he was supposed to ride into the uh, glorious entry in Luxembourg, I think it was on this completely uh, armored horse. And then we see him wear a male briette in that picture. There's various depictions like this. So we look back at the sources and see at examples of the artist presuming that somebody might do this. So we see that it's not an impossibility. It's not even a great encumbrance. There is no real practical reason not to. Secondly, we have sources that show it that don't necessarily have a reason to be wrong or need to be excused because of uh, source criticism. And thereby we can start assuming that it was probably also done on occasion. However, it's pretty rare. Most of the time it's male upon male upon male. Um, but yeah, plate cod pieces, it's a thing. <laughs>